Hey, welcome back to my channel. I've been a fan of turn-based RPGs for as long as I can remember, and when I stumbled across Amori on the Steam store page, I never would have expected it to be a game I'll be remembering as one of my favorite games of all time. Here's my review of Amori. Omori is an RPG developed by Omocan and released on Steam December 25th, 2020. The game's colourful art style and underlying mystery intrigued me into picking it up at the start of this year, but I was underprepared for what was to come. Just a heads up, I will be keeping the majority of this review spoiler free and will go more in depth with story spoilers later in the video. In Omori, you play as, well, Omori a boy who goes out on an adventure with his three best friends in search for the friend Basil, who goes missing. This being an RPG has you fighting all kinds of creatures as you traverse the world. The game's combat was super satisfying and gives room for a lot of build diversity. Omori's combat features a rock-paper-scissors-like system called emotions. Characters in your party can make use of their skills to become happy, sad, or even angry. This system is in-depth, and making use of it is critical in beating some of the harder fights in the game. The setup I used most in the game was using Kel's Annoy move to make Aubrey angry, which then increased the damage of her headbutt move. Using emotions on enemies also affects their stats too. While exploring the overworld, each party member also has abilities that will let you overcome specific blockings in your path. Here's where the tag system comes in handy. Using the tag button, you can switch which party member is the leader. Omori can slash through small objects with his knife, Kel can throw rocks at switches, Aubrey can destroy bigger objects with her bat, and Hero can smooth talk people and uh, conveyor belts. <laughs> There's also a cute Polaroid animation that shows up when you tag friends. Speaking of the overworld, Omori's world is full of vibrant and varied locations, and these are made even better with the colorful cast of characters inhabiting them. I always made sure to talk to any NPC I came across because they always had something to say about the place they were in, or just something to make me laugh. Take the Sprout Moles for example, they only really care about two things in this world, Tofu and the game's most obnoxious character, Sweetheart. There's also collectibles in the form of 26 keyboard keys to collect, which tie into the game's ending, so make sure to pick these up when you see them. The core letters are hard to miss, but there are some exceptions. The main characters also had a lot to say throughout the game, and one of my highlights of the game was getting to know this friend group and learning more about them. From Kel and Aubrey's constant bickering, to Hero's mature nature of being a little bit older and using his head more than being impulsive in situations. Visually, this game is a treat to the eyes. The combat art is super unique, especially for the bigger boss fights you get to see a more intense art style that really symbolizes the urgency of the fight. The overworld also has some pretty sights to it. There are certain points in the game where you can do activities with your friends, things like making sandcastles or staring at a full moon. These moments were perfectly spread throughout the game, and it really made me appreciate the art. There's also cutscenes in the game that have their own unique stop-motion style, but I'll say more about them in the spoiler section. The sound design is also one of my favorites I've seen in the game in quite some time. The soundtrack perfectly solidifies the environments in the game, and some of the battle themes really add to the intensity of the fights. Recurring characters also have fitting themes, even the simple overworld sounds have stuck in my mind. I remember walking over a fried egg on the ground multiple times just to hear the satisfying squish it made. To really talk about what fascinated me about Amori, I need to dive into some story spoilers. I highly recommend you experience these for yourself, and if you want to skip this section, skip ahead to this time. Consider yourself warned, because we have a lot to talk about. Remember when I mentioned I suspected there was an ominous underlying mystery to this game? Well, Amori deals with some pretty heavy topics in its roughly 15 hour story. Right from the start of the game, there are sections where unexplained horrors fill this colorful world. This is especially true from Basil's disappearance. Now there are actually two worlds in this game, 
one featuring Amori and the Dream World, and the other featuring the player character Sunny, who is Amori's real world counterpart, which can be renamed. In the real world, Sunny created Omori and the Dream World as a coping mechanism for the death of his sister Mari. Mari can also be found in the Dream World as save points spread throughout the world. In the real world, it's been years since the characters you've got to know and love have hung out together, and Sunny is moving away in only a few days. Aubrey has a new group of friends and has grown to resent Kel and Basil after the death of Mari. Hero has gone off to college and Basil remains very closed off and is being taken care of by his carer Polly. Kel manages to get Sonny out of his house to explore the town of Faraway. And in doing so, they both start to interact with their old friends in hopes of everything going back to the way they were. Sonny is constantly followed by what the game refers to as something, and it starts to bleed into the dream world, where things eventually start spiraling out of control, forcing Sonny to face what he's been running from all this time. Basil also has that something following him, and it's what's causing his paranoia. There are scenes in the real world where you experience Basil breaking down firsthand. These scenes were sometimes even tough to watch, but are integral to the game's endings. Facing your fears is a concept that was introduced into the game from the early point. Trying to access certain areas before they introduce you gave you a dialogue, you are afraid of drowning, or you are afraid of heights. Amori's friends know this about him and eventually encourage him to overcome those fears and go through it together. A lot of those fears and the somethings are also brought to life thanks to the stop motion cutscenes I mentioned earlier. Eventually, you learn more about everything that Sunny was running from, but I'll leave that for you to discover. The game features multiple endings and even an entirely different route featuring new bosses, locations, but locking off the faraway sections of the game. Amori is a game that's filled with love, loss, and loneliness, but it's also filled to the brim with friendship and an amazing cast of characters and locations who will remain with me for a long time. If you're a fan of games like Earthbound or Undertale, you'll feel right at home here. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and let me know if you've played Amori in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts, and if you want to see more content surrounding indie games, make sure to subscribe. I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.